What's going on, brother? Not much, man. How you been? Pretty good. Just yeah. came back from Morocco? Just came back from Morocco. Great yeah. trip. Yeah? Yeah. So what was the highlight of your trip? Probably the Sahara Desert. Just, you know, being on top of a dune, they're like yeah. four or five stories high. So really? to get up all the way, it's quite a workout, but I caught the sunrise, yeah. 6.30 a.m. in the morning. That was pretty dope. Was it breathtaking? Yeah, it was really breathtaking. And a good exercise, too. Yeah. You and I, before uh, filming this, you were mentioning the despair between poverty and the rich over there. Yeah, it's pretty drastic. It's pretty drastic, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the average Moroccan makes about $10,000 a year. Fuck. It's not very much at all. Yeah. Uh, and then the rich, you know, they do well. I mean, I saw some supercars over there. I saw the, the king's got a palace in pretty much every city. Fucking kings, eh? Yeah. They, uh, they took this one city called Ifrain, uh, yeah. and uh, they call it the Switzerland of Morocco. It's, okay. And it's quite literally, you're in the desert, yeah. you go in, and every street, the cafes, everything, yeah. it's where the French go to ski uh, because it's hmm. cheaper. Interesting. Yeah. So and, what, and would you, what would you say is the biggest industry? Is like how are the wealthy making money over there? I have no clue. <laughs> Extortion. <laughs> I have no clue. Interesting. Okay. I, didn't, I didn't interact with any wealthy, right? It was just every, the everyday man. Yeah. Uh, just trying to make a living. I mean, tourism is a big industry for yeah. sure, right? Uh, a lot of people coming into Marrakesh and going into the Medina and things like that. But it's nice to see the interplay between local life versus what tourists want. Because it's still, like you have McDonald's, yeah. but it's not as big as in some other countries where you might have tourists. Fucking McDonald's is everywhere, man. I know. They're the real estate kings of the world. They are. They are. That's a, the that's a thing. People think McDonald's is in the business of burgers. It's the real estate. In the yeah. real estate. Yeah. Real estate yeah. business. Yeah. Well, do you think, um, well, obviously we're kind of in a bubble here in North America with like the digital uh, e-commerce and online marketing. Do you see it ever proliferating in that region of Africa or no? I think so. I mean, yeah. if you look at Africa is one of those continents that have had um, hyper leaps in terms of technology. They didn't put in any regular phone lines. They oh, went yeah, from right no phones mobile. to cell phones. Yep, yep. And uh, I think payment technology is going to increase over there as well. A good example actually is India. I mean, India has been a cash-based society for a long, long time. Yeah. And now it's really changed. It got fucked up, man. Was a couple yeah. of days ago the denominations it really changed. Yeah. Man. Uh, it, it was actually a software entrepreneur that introduced this concept to the government for payment tech tied to essentially what is a, a social security number. And it's called an Aadhaar card. Yeah. And unless you've got one of these, you can't have a bank account. You can't even get a cell phone. Bro, it's like Canada though. You can't get a bank account without a SIN number. It's true. You're it's tied, true. You're tied but towards you could, it. You can't, I think over here you can just get a burner phone if you wanted to. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, you can't yeah, do yeah. that. Yeah. Like, you know, you could do it in Thailand. I did it sure. in Morocco. I just, as soon as I got off the plane, I yeah. got a SIM card. You guys know what a burner phone is? <laughs> a burner phone. Google it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, everyone should know what that is. Yeah, but honestly, I mean, it's it's one of those things where I think it will have that hyper leap. Yeah. And it'll, it'll become... You have to also understand the trust-based economy of the system, right? Yeah. So, like, if you look at Finland, yeah. they've almost done away with cash entirely. Really? And instead of using the lending system, using you know credit cards, what they have is a, a debit card-based system okay. that is almost real-time transfer. Interesting. So, you know, you can actually see the balance, like, deduct from your account and and into the other merchant or maybe so your friend or whatever. So kind of like crypto in a way, but not in cryptocurrency, not but crypto. it's like an open ledger. Open ledger, yeah, you know, yeah. supported by the banking system yeah. and a lot of transparency in there huh. as well. Yeah. Now, going back to Africa, obviously there's Kenya, they have M-Pesa over there. Mm -hmm. So the cell phone minutes for transaction, mm -hmm. I think the market cap is like two, three hundred million dollars. Yeah. And that was created out of necessity. Uh, but going back to India right now, because the denominations dropped, yeah. we're, what does India need to do right now to kind of get them out of their predicament? And what, what predicament are you talking about? With the currency, like let's say it's now the devaluation of the currency. What's it going to take to increase the valuation again? Well, so there's the immediate sort of thing that's going on, which I mean, if you guys don't know, India, uh, you know, is to essentially fight crime. Yeah. Uh, took away the 500 rupee and the thousand rupee. No, a thousand rupees is not a lot of money. It's about 15 US dollars. Yeah. So. And you, uh, what, they, what I mean by taking them away is, you know, there's new notes coming that have better tracking. So yeah. it's not like they just did away with the currency at all. In fact, they introduced a, a 2,000 rupee note. Yeah. But what ended up happening is this. 
if you had this money overnight, it became useless. So you mm. had to go to the bank and exchange it. Yeah. But the bank would only ex let you exchange about four thousand rupees a day. Yeah. So if you you were shit out of luck if you had more money than that. And get, <laughs> get it this way. Now is wedding season in India, yeah. so their families are shoring up, you know, two hundred and fifty to three hundred thousand rupees yeah. for wedding season because everybody accepts cash, mm -hmm. and for everybody who's got these thousand rupee bills, which is the the highest denomination of bill until the decision was just made, mm -hmm. they're shit out of luck, Fuck. right? So they're going to their their sort of familial networks and yeah. giving money to their relatives and having these relatives line up at the bank for three hours a day so they can exchange this money and they have to make 13 to 15 trips to, to fund a wedding. Well, you should see what happened with Bitcoin in India when that happened. Thousand US to got valuation in India. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Unicoin, right? Well, Unicoin, they got funding a couple of months ago, 1.5 mil. Yep. Sunny's, Sunny Ray over here. Um, but the actual acceptance and the need for cryptocurrency now in India just skyrocketed. Yeah. Which is great because like over here we're very privy and savvy towards like government involvement with the banking. Obviously we have, in fact Canada has a very good banking system in comparison to yeah. say even actually United States is shit, but compared to the United States or even certain European countries. But if you look at countries like India or China or mm -hmm. Africa, the relationship between the citizens and the government is not like over here. Yeah. It's like every man for himself. I don't trust the government in any aspect. Yeah. And whatever I can do. Yeah. I think there's a reluctance for sure but in India for for people to have this level of scrutiny and yeah. linking, you know, for a, a society that's always been very cash based. Yes. Uh, and, and largely I think the number is something like only fifteen percent of uh, of taxes are filed in India. Really? So <laughs> that's a big problem to solve if you think about it, right? Yeah. They're the true libertarians, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no taxes, huh? Every man for himself. It's, it's a little hard to enforce a government on, on a billion and plus yeah. people, you know. And I bet, like, if you know, it, it's 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 tough. Just even in America, when you have three hundred uh, million plus, you can only imagine when a billion people and you got different religions. Uh, different. Spends a problem, really. Yeah. Like, you can look at you can look at states like. Um, like Singapore, right? Mm -hmm. Five million people. It's it's always touted as a, as a beautiful example. I love Singapore. Yeah. It's so easy to live and work there as an expat or otherwise for that matter. Yeah. But it's five billion people. It's the same thing as like Qatar. Qatar's got five million people. Yeah. You try, you know, multiplying that out to 300 million or a billion people, it just doesn't scale. Yeah. So government just becomes that much more um, hard to run. And it's it's rife with problems, like you know. Do you think? Do you think United or you know how we're like a we're pretty socialist in Canada? Yeah. Not as socialist as any of the Scandinavian countries. Sure. Yeah. But the Scandinavian countries don't have fucking three hundred million people, and they're not multicultural like United States yeah, or Canada. Yeah. Very is. homogeneous. Yeah. Yes. You know, a lot of people yeah. don't talk about that. Yeah. And also the history of them. They, you know, each country is independent. Like you can't compare country X to country Y. No. So I'm always like curious for all these people talking about. Whether it's like new form of socialism or whatever it may be, I'm like, yeah, but like you're talking about like very small countries. Mm -hmm. I like to see that applied to a country that has 500 million people. Yeah, it, 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 the, the short answer is it can't be, at least not in a short time frame. A short time frame being, say, 10 years. Even. Yeah. Uh, you know, this is probably a 50 to 100 year type of journey yeah. for a country to turn over and change. It's it's really generational. Yeah. Right at that point in time. I'm interested to see what Canada does with that UBI program they want to roll out. Tell me more about that. I don't know. The universal that. basic income. So oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, so they're doing like a very small trial run right now in Ontario. I think they're mm. giving giving certain people, what was it, like 18,000 or something like that? Yeah. But it has to replace welfare. There's no this or that. And yeah. many other programs. Like, listen, yeah. this is all you get. Yeah. Uh, but. I think there's also criteria. I think you have to do X, Y, and Z to get that. Yeah, I think that UBI makes a lot of sense for industries where you know automation and robots are going to take over. Yes, entirely. Right. Yes. So it, it's almost a safety net. Safety net that prevents sort of civil riot even, you know, for like, take the trucking sector as an example, yeah, right? Yeah. It's gonna become completely automated. Oh yeah, right now in Europe, they got the Volvos are fully automated going across continental Europe. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it's one of those areas where you need to retrain people. Yeah. And uh, until you do, you've got people who are out of jobs and therefore can't put food on the table. So what's your take on this with the, say the robotics and the AI and the automation literally in the next decade? Robotics is good. I think um, fully sentient, conscious AI is not no, good. No, no. But 
I think it's look, it's gonna it's gonna happen yeah. regardless, right? And I think that in much the same way, it's like the second coming of the industrial revolution, right? It's a good like, way, yeah. Like essentially, we're talking about machines having freed up the inability for us. Like you know, you can build muscle, and you can obviously get exert more force to be able to lift things and move them around mm -hmm, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. The industrial revolution kind of took care of that, and we had machines now doing that for us. Mm -hmm. And the next level is so robotics is just a continuation of that, I think, to applications that we weren't able to. I mean, very localized factories and plants is what we have today. Mm -hmm. But to have machines move the transportation, the streets, and etc., fully autonomously, I think that is the next step. Um, the the part I think that scares a lot of people is can it replace how we think? So is the second industrial revolution the part that we haven't outsourced um, in the last 200 years, which is you know being able to think and be creative and come up with well, ideas? I think that's the problem right now. Like our educational system is a joke. Yeah, it's a vestige of that industrial revolution, yeah. right? It's it's not up to date with what people need to learn and at the speed of what's happening in yeah, society. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, and this is I'm not saying no education. I think everybody has a human right to be educated, uh, but. I really believe a lot of people are going to be in for a big shock. Mm -hmm. You know, within the next five years, you're seeing fully self-driving cars in almost every major city. Pittsburgh has the first, I think, six to ten Ubers fully driving wow. in Pittsburgh right now. They've been on there for three months, and so far so good. Tesla just revealed they're like yeah. fully uh, solarized island that mm -hmm. produces everything, and now you have your car can take you from point A to point B. So now you have an industry of people who are taxi drivers. Even though they're trying to fight so hard against Uber, they're gone yeah. automatically yeah. because it's going to be cheaper because you're not paying anybody's salary. You're yeah. not paying anybody even like per gig. It's like the company literally owns the car. Yeah. So they can become the Walmart of the industry. Yeah. Like, much. oh yeah. Usually, like, let's say you're Uber driver and so I do a lot of Ubering from downtown Toronto to North York. I do right. Uber pool. So Uber, uh, if I do an Uber by myself from Toronto, uh, sorry, from downtown Toronto, to North York, it's like 30 bucks, give or take. Right. Uber pool, you split 30 bucks among whatever, so it's cheap yeah. as fucking hell, right? Uber can come with a self-driving car that they own yep. and literally undercut. So if it's gonna cost me 30 bucks by myself, like, all right, here's, here's like 10 bucks. Why, why would you why, say no to that? Why would I say no to that? Yeah. And they're making hands over fist. Because they can just Uber pool with other people and they're making 40 bucks a well, trip. Well, it becomes so, so efficient, right? Yeah. Because it, that entire supply and demand, they can match it up so yes. beautifully. Yes, yes. And there would be really no uh, inefficiencies no. at that point in time. And even traffic's better. Imagine they hook up to Waze, like the app. They go, traffic over yeah. here, police over there, uh, there's an issue over here, so they reroute everything. I think the future is this. I mean, the, the, the part of the middle is kind of scary when you have Autom automated cars yeah. and drivers, and you have this hybrid model. Yeah. And I think that's where the, the big data accumulation and understanding will happen as to how will humans um, respond to automated cars driving the way they I do. I wouldn't be surprised. It may not happen here, it may happen somewhere else, but I would not be surprised if it was illegal for a human to drive. Hmm. Because it's so dangerous. I could see that actually happening in the, Nord the Nordic countries first. Right. It's illegal because yeah. my issue right now is not new technology, it's just for lit litigation issues. Like a self-driving car hits a human car. Whose insurance covers who? Yeah, I mean, those are some of the big ethical, you know, dilemmas that, and we work with a couple of insurance clients at Powered by Search. And yeah. I mean, that's that's the real deal. I mean, who covers it? Who covers it? I'm quite it's fascinated. Big, big to moral see, dilemma. Like, it's almost going to be like everyone has a black box from like an airplane. Yeah. And yeah. then they're gonna determine from the black box exactly how fast you're going, the angle that you're going. Yeah. And there's no like guesstimating, it's like we know exactly what you've been doing because you've been plugged in. Yep. Yeah. Um, but it's, you know, I tell everybody, I'm like, regardless of what industry you're in or what you're doing or how smart you think you are, yeah. just be mentally prepared. I'm not, it's really hard to kind of prepare for the future, like I need this skill or that knowledge. It's like, just be mentally prepared that things are about to change rapidly. Pretty drastically, I would say. I mean, it's, I think we're gonna enjoy it from a consumer perspective first, yeah. and just, I mean, with Siri and Amazon, you know, Echo yeah. and things like that, moving to voiceless search has been touted for a Google long Home, time. I just Google saw that the other yeah. day, yeah. Automa yeah. The home automation will just become more and more prevalent. Well, first. Google, I, I know they've been saying this for a long fucking time, but supposedly maybe this year or next year, Google wants to start indexing like video SEO. So voice, exactly, Google Home. So anything they were saying, whether yeah. it's this or something else, they'll index it. Brings up a lot of privacy issues too. Big right? time, man. And, and this is the, I, I think the conundrum that 
the the educated person has, which yeah. is, you know, my voice now no longer belongs to me. No. Oh, you see Adobe? I did see it. Fuck, bro. That's, that's, that's crazy. That's some crazy. I mean, that's minority report type yeah. stuff, right? Even more yeah. reason why I want to yeah. double down on like cryptocurrency, blockchain, and yeah. anonymity, and keeping private as much as possible. There's like simple tips people can do. You don't want to get cookied, you can use uh, DuckDuckGo. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to really go in the deep end, you can use Tor, Tor and Onion. Yep. Uh, you can do VPNs, they're cheap as hell, like 15 bucks a year. There's no reason why somebody shouldn't be using a VPN. No reason. You can get VPNs yeah. for your phone. Actually, every device, every portal that you have, you can get packages for VPN yeah. that cost you like a pennies a day. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. So everyone should have VPNs, everyone should at least understand what Tor is or Onion, the browser. Yeah. Um, understand at least like other options in Google. Like, you don't want to get hit with ads or cookies, you can just go on DuckDuckGo. It's I think I start off with just understanding that the default options that Facebook and Google have turned on for you are not in your best interest. No. So get to know the privacy settings that are in your Google account as well as your Facebook. I mean, if you have an Android phone, one of the things that's automatically turned on, I believe, is just Google um, history tracking around yeah. which places you visit. Yeah. So they can actually show you a little heat map yeah. of all the places you go to, and that's what primarily powers Google now. Yeah. I turned that off, and plus what I have on my phone over here is this ghetto sticker, but my camera, you guys can see that. Let me see, bring that in. <laughs> I put a little fucking sticker, man. The DDoS attacks that happened for the yeah. internet like a couple weeks ago was this. Yeah. They turned everyone on and that's the thing, IOTs, everything yeah. becomes a portal. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really crazy actually just to know how many times like, your smart, our, both of our smartphones are on the desk right now, but they're pinging all sorts of servers mm -hmm. and it's just really interesting to see how, how many they actually ping. Actually, did you see that thing Sammy Comcard came out with? Um, uh, it's a little USB port device that you can plug into your Mac yeah. and it will take over your entire computer because no. what it does is it, it showcases itself as uh, as an internet hot as a wired connection okay so your your computer automatically thinks that hey I'm on Wi-Fi it should probably go over to wired it's more secure yeah and it's also faster oh, 